In today's modern age, lack of information usually isn't what stops us from succeeding. We often know what to do, but when it comes down to it, we fail when we try to execute, even if it's beyond our control. Luckily, failure is a good way to learn, and I found myself in a great example of this yesterday during a difficult emotional situation that I'm going to share with you. I'm also going to share some great news about a PET scan result that I got and give you a health update, but I'm going to wait for that because I want to run with this idea right now. After all, it is all about execution. So in my last video, I talked about the concept of mental health momentum. Basically, using your good stretches of mental health to work on yourself and create useful habits so that when you are finding yourself in tougher times, you don't feel the pressure to do all the hard work then and you can just rest and relax and recover. I'm in one of those good mental health states right now, but I still found myself in a really tricky conversation with my partner last night. I'm not gonna go into the exact specifics, but it was basically about how we were trying to keep our relationship on track as we go through this cancer experience together. And I've been really sick and had a lot of bad side effects for the last month plus, so I haven't been dynamic or been able to hang out as much, and I know it's been really difficult on her. And even as we were having this conversation, I found myself getting frustrated, not with her, but with the entirety of the situation and how cancer is making my dating life so hard again. The problem is that I was showing the frustration overtly and it kind of seemed like I was directing it at her, which isn't fair to her at all. And I really wanted to address this in the moment and try and correct it because as you identify things like this, this is how you work on them. Luckily, this is something I've done a lot of work on. Um, I haven't really mentioned it much on this vlog yet, but the impact that cancer had on my relationship during my first diagnosis and treatment was really, really difficult on me. Probably one of the hardest things I've ever had to go through. And I'm not comparing relationships at all. I would never do that to my former partner or my current partner out of respect from them both. But if I can learn from my own mistakes that I made the first time around and try and avoid them this time, I think it'll serve me very well. So I was trying to use that and apply it in the moment. So even as I was getting visibly frustrated in, during the conversation, which for me, ironically, I, I get quiet because if you haven't noticed, I like to talk a lot. Um, I tried my best to explain to my partner that I wasn't frustrated at her, I was frustrated at the situation and how I was reacting to the question that she asked. And we ended up having a really good and productive conversation. Like obviously it wasn't perfect, it was a little bit tense at times, but it was really valuable to me that we were able to address an issue of mine that has manifested before and carry it over to a level in which I feel like my skills are improving with this coping mechanism and I can continue to use these practices in the future. Speaking of the future, let's actually go over the great news that I talked about at the beginning of this video because I am pretty stoked as I'm speaking right now. Um, last Friday, I did a full body PET scan, which was the first imaging I've done since my diagnosis in February. And it was basically gonna show the either progression or regression of the cancerous sites in my lymph node on my face and the lymph node in my iliac area in my abdomen. And they were both minor sites, but obviously it's stage four cancer. It can go either direction. The good news is regardless of the results, I'm probably going to end up staying on the same treatment plan. But the better news is that I just recently, like hours ago, got a text from my oncologist and said, scan looked great, uh, tumor sites are making progress, we'll go over it soon, which is obviously amazing news because when you're dealing with you know chronic long-term cancer, you're just looking to maintain you know positive momentum because if you're going the right direction, you're always gonna have the best chance possible. So that news is fantastic. Like. As I'm saying this, I'm, you know, my brain is lighting up with all sorts of dopamine and stuff like that because, man, what, it's, it's so tough to get bad news, bad news, bad news. And then finally, when you get that good news, it, it really starts to feel like everything's turning around, especially on top of all the side effects I've been having. It's been rough, so this feels pretty good. What does that mean? Well, first of all, I don't know the exact specifics of what the scan read, so I'm going to have to sit down with my oncologist and talk about, you know, exactly where we're at. And then I am hopeful that I can pick up treatment as soon as possible. I'm tapering off the steroids that I'm on right now, and I'd really like to get off of those because I feel like an alien. But man, overall, so encouraging. So, um, you know, next time I talk to you guys, I think I'll have the finite results and a plan for my treatment. But, you know, th these are the moments that make it worth doing this vlog because I can show, you know, I I've been talking a lot about the stressful side effects and the, you know, the things that I'm going through that aren't exactly ideal, but this also needs to be, you know, a a transparent on the vlog too. We want to celebrate wins. Every cancer patient's goal is to, you know, get rid of the disease for as long as they can or, t or permanently. And I'm happy that I can at least have this one and hopefully many more. And the future is really what this whole video has been about anyway, whether it's me describing the mental health strategies that I use and you can employ to work on your skills during good times, 
or just knowing that cancer patients are always looking forward to the future and trying to affect the things we can control while hopefully getting the best results from the things that we can't. Um, if you like this video, I would really be stoked and grateful if you liked the video itself and subscribed to my channel. Uh, the future of this channel has been looking better and better. I'm getting you know more subscribers and more views, and each time I get that, it really helps to build an audience that can create really dynamic conversations about cancer, whether they are difficult conversations or happy ones. I, I want to share all of them with you. So if you've made it this far, thank you again for watching. I really do appreciate it every time. And I will see you next week with an update on how my treatment is going to be and what the future might hold for us. Thank you. Bye.